All right, guys, so today I got something very special for you guys. Today, we're gonna be meeting up with Wendy. Now, Wendy is actually from Hawaii. Now she lives out here in Las Vegas and she flips a multi-million dollar home. So this property back me, she just got done with this project. So we're gonna check it out. We're gonna find out exactly how she made her money and how she was able to scale to the point where she is now. Let's go check it out. Wendy, hey. how are you doing? Good, good to see you. So first, foremost, I wanna start off by saying thank you so much for taking the time, allowing us to come into your life, your project, and showing us exactly what you do for a living. So guys, this is uh, Wendy. She's originally from Hawaii, right? Yes. And how long have you been living here in Vegas? I was living here since like 02, so over 15 years. Okay, so I was telling the audience that you flip multi-million dollar homes mm -hmm. and it was very impressive. Not only that, she's a female because you don't really get too many females in this industry and I think that's very strong. So, can you show me around, show me what's going on and yeah. how you got started and all that stuff? Yes, so this property, we demoed everything, got it everything, everything in the interior is brand new. Okay. We did wide wood plank floorings, we added Kind of a, like a wine display wall. Okay. Um, floor to ceiling, fireplace. That's like a porcelain marble tile, LED. We did three fireplaces actually. So this is another one. We did custom wood slats and painted it with the accent paint. Um, this whole kitchen is brand new. Quartz countertops, waterfall island. So you, you all, ripped this all yeah, out? Yeah, I mean, it was there was like a small island facing that way. So we okay. wanted to add bar stools. So we did a linear waterfall island and Brand new cab, everything's brand new. All these are a Samsung appliances. That's a smart fridge actually. Okay. It connects to your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then we kind of just did like a smooth finish hood. So who comes up with all these ideas? I do. So do you just sit down with your team? Like I how just, does all that work? I don't really have a team honestly. It's just me and my husband. But I, okay. I kind of just look on like Instagram or look online and see what the in style is now so okay so you get your inspiration mm -hmm. based upon today's current market yes what people would actually buy at I mean, this people used to want gray now yeah. it's pure white so okay yeah. interesting yeah all right what else we got here so the pantry's here then we got the double double oven, oven yeah cooktop so how many bedrooms and bathrooms is this this has five bedrooms five bathrooms but that includes the detached casita okay. that has a full and uh, where are we located right now we are in Southern Highlands in the guard gated foothills community. Okay. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of your flip properties are in guard gated communities. Yes. Why is I'm that? I'm trying to transition to just luxury and I know a lot of buyers want to be behind a guard gate. Yeah. So we do a lot of Southern Highlands, actually a lot of Anthem Country Club. Mm -hmm. So that market is definitely hot okay. in there. All right, show me what else we got So here. yeah, so we did, we try to focus on like the main rooms, like kitchen, living room, master, so we did brand new quartz countertops. You have a wine fridge. These are actually custom wood shelves built just for the bar. Okay. Um, powder room. This is actually a backlit mirror. Oh, nice. Like wall sconces. Okay. And farm sink, laundry room, shaker cabinets. Got it. There's actually a four car garages tandem. We have a four car garage in here. So even though there's a casita, they still have a four car garage. Okay, and they're able to get access. Oh, so whoever lives in the casita has to yeah. come back out through here then? Yeah, okay. and then it goes back out to the pool right there, but okay. at least they have the space to still have four car, because a lot of the homes in here have four car garages. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go take a look upstairs and see what else we got okay. here. Oh, we have an office den right here. Oh. With a big window, view to the courtyard. I know a lot of the homes have an open area here, but I figured maybe they want to turn it into a bedroom, so we kind of left it closed off. Oh, so this original was open or you had that option? No, it was closed off, but I saw a lot of floor plans that actually have that open right there as like an office entry oh, from the living it. room. But we just decided to leave it closed off. Now, what made you get started into like flipping properties? Because we were speaking earlier, you were flipping properties. Yeah, I honestly, I used to watch those flipping shows back in like 2008 and I got yeah. inspired from there. Okay. And like I said, I don't know how to do the agent thing. I'm not good at marketing and all that. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've, I wanted to be my own boss. So I just wanted to do my own thing. So the first flip we did was, yeah, back in 2009. So how many yeah. flips have you done so far? I don't know, probably like 400. 
Okay. Yeah. So you were saying earlier, um, you know, when you first started, you only had like what, 30,000 or something like that? Yeah, I was actually working at Excess Nightclub. I had about, I saved about 30, 40,000. Okay. I put in my two weeks. I was like, okay, I'm going to just go for it. And I got my license. Well, at first I did a first flip. Then I got my license. And then we actually made a good like $25,000 on a one bedroom condo. Oh, wow. So I was like, okay, let's just keep rolling it over and doing it over and over. So and then I started reaching out to friends, get extra funding and... Then hard money loans came about. That wasn't mm -hmm. there. That wasn't a thing when I first started. We had to pay cash at the auction. Mm -hmm. So we actually had to get cashier's checks. So once I got hard money, I was able to like leverage and do multiple flips at a time. Yeah. yeah. Were you scared? Definitely. Definitely Look scared. At it's very risky, but I mean, <laughs> it was like all in or not, you know? So, oh, and wow. I didn't want to work a job anymore. So I was okay. just like, I'm just going to go. So 100%. for a lot of viewers out there that are trying to get into the game, like wh where do you find the deals? I think that's one of the hardest parts, right? Right. So when I first started, we actually used to just go straight to the trustee sale. The auction was so busy. You can get like crazy deals at the time. That kind of dried up. And then I started going with like wholesalers. Mm -hmm. So I'll just buy properties from wholesalers, renovate it, sell it. And now I'm just trying to go into the luxury market. So nice. Yeah. Let's take a look at this backyard because this is yeah. gorgeous. What'd you end up doing out here? So actually we didn't do much out here. This was actually the highlight of the home. We first purchased it. So this was already like this. This was already like this. Yeah. So it already had a nice, tropical backyard with palm trees. It has a koi ponds over there. So now, the backyard was already the highlight of the home. Now, is this true? Like when you start hitting about that one million range, a property this size should already have a pool? As far as like value-wise? I don't like wise? to build pools. I've been through that before and it's a lot of stress and headache. So I kind of find properties only with pools. Yeah. So I, I don't look, I don't even flip properties without pools. So it sounds like on the luxury side, when you're find, finding these flip properties, you probably prefer one with a pool, right? Only with the pool. That's, Only that's with hot. the pool. I mean, you could build a pool, but it's just so much time with the permits and everything. I just rather, I'm more about renovating the inside mm -hmm. and already having a nice backyard. Okay, so you so. didn't really do nothing, just clean it up a no, little bit. No, just cleaned it up, yeah. Okay. And it already had like new concrete, the pool was already done, all the trees were already here. So. And uh, how large is this lot here? I think it's about 11,300. Okay. So it's pretty good size. All right, I actually can't wait to see the upstairs of primary. Because I'm sure you probably yeah, tricked out the bathroom, right? Yeah, definitely. That okay. was our main focus was the master bedroom. So. so what are the main areas that you really focus on and where do you see where you get, you know, your bang for your buck? So the main areas are always the kitchen, okay. master bedroom, and I would even say the powder room because that's where all the guests go. Okay. And, you know, the living room, of course. But we main focus on that. We don't focus too much on the extra bedrooms, but... Yeah, let's go take a look at the master. So this is actually plush upgraded carpet too throughout the okay. upstairs. Now, is this something a regular consumer at this price point would think about as far as the carpet? I think so, because a lot of homes in here I saw actually have those standard carpets. Yeah. So I wanted to just go with the upgraded carpet rather than do wood floors up here. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's more comfortable to yeah. have carpet. So definitely plush upgraded carpet. We renovated this whole bathroom Oh, so paint a picture originally what this so, thing actually looked like. It had kind of those drop-in tubs. Yeah. It had a really small squared shower. So we just like knocked the whole thing out and it actually had one of those windows which we tiled over. But yeah, we just did a floor to ceiling walled shower with the standing tub. Yeah. Because it was one of those drop-in old ones, you know, so. Now, what, what did you spend for your rehab, your total? About 125. Okay, so that's very low. Yeah. Now at 125, what was the percentage to, to remodel this whole bathroom out of that 125? What did it cost Probably you? Probably just like 10% of that. 10%? Yeah. Okay, that's not that yeah. bad. Yeah, I mean, we do a lot with our contractor. We use the same contractor, so he definitely gives us deals. Okay. We just send all our business to the one contractor. So basically, so. as long as you keep them busy, yes. you get a better of a better discount. Yes, when we first started with him, he was charging us, you know, a lot more. Yeah. But we give him so much business that he, he gives us a good deal. Okay. Yeah. And you've got, you've got other projects that are going right now. Yeah, we have one in Anthem Country Club that just closed. Mm -hmm. And we have two more about to be renovated in Anthem as well. Wow. So you're yeah, just so. constantly moving. Yeah, as soon as I get an offer on one, I'm already looking for the next deal. So. Can I ask you this? Out of all your flip properties that you've done, what was the highest profit you made off of one flip? The highest profit was actually not in residential. It was in commercial. Okay. We started getting into multi-units back in 2013. We yeah. bought a 200-unit apartment complex on East Charleston. It was 3,800 East Charleston. Um, we bought it for 3.8. At the time, we used hard money. Yeah. And it was just we just kept renting it out and fixing it up, and we got an offer for like over five million. So. 
That's it's still a great deal. It was, I would it was buy that right now at five yeah. million. I mean, that property now, I swear, is like almost twenty million. Though I honestly wish oh. we kept it. So I do regret that, but it was good. It was within like six months. So, damn, yeah. she's got nothing but the, W's. All the, wins, baby. The cap rates All were wins. good at the time. The cap Dude. rates were like twenty percent. Yeah. Now they're like five or six. You know. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So. Whew. But that wasn't our thing. The multi-units, we tried that. The commercial, yeah. it just we. I rather do like residential. Okay. So this is just basic. All you do is just constantly flipping flip. properties. We do Airbnbs too, though. We okay. have a lot of rentals in Utah and here. So we get a lot of residual income. And then on the side, we just put houses. Yeah. Got it. All right. What so, else yeah. do we have? Show so me. So these. Oh, yeah. Glass Vegas did this. Nicole. Oh, yeah. Nicole, she did Glass this Vegas. glass. So I've been working with her a lot recently. She's really yeah, good. She's super yeah. cool. Yeah. She's hey, good. I better get a commission <laughs> off this deal. <laughs> <laughs> Referral agreement. Okay, what else yeah, you got here? So this is actually the European wood oak cabinets. Okay. And we did, we kept the makeup bar here. These are actually backlit mirrors too. Nice. Yeah. So you can either do backlit or wall sconce. So and, is um, it better to change the themes from each room? Because I noticed the cabinets are not the same as the kitchen. I just kind of wanted a different look in the master and the powder. So we just went with the wood cabinets, but okay. the rest of the house just simple white shaker just because I feel like most people like white, so kind of a safer route for a cabinet. Now, are you pretty much using all the same materials and products at this point? We I, are because it's what people like. Yeah. And so I feel like, like the Anthem one was almost similar to this and they loved yeah. it, so. Now, what would you yeah. say to uh, all the critics out there that always talks about homes that are selling at 1.2 and up using LVP? I personally they always like LVP. About I don't like hardwood. I mean, it scratches up easily. Yeah. If you, water damage, it damages the wood, so. That's why I like LVP. I think a lot of people don't realize nice. how expensive it is too. Yeah, there's some expensive luxury yeah. vinyl planks out there. So, and okay. it still has that wide plank wood okay. look. So, all right, what else we got? Yeah, so toilet room, and then we have we did a accent wall here. Mm -hmm. The home already had shutters, but they were kind of like a cherry wood color, so we painted them white. Okay. Um, we did a concrete gray fireplace here. So basically, this was all bare. It was actually like a niche. Yeah. With a, for a TV, but. We kind of like closed it up and just added a fireplace. Now, you know, like some of these homes, like the way it was designed, because this was built, what, the early 2000s, right? I think it was 2002. Yeah. And sometimes the design, it just doesn't really match the decor or the style. It that doesn't, you so it's really so hard. Like that how do you design right it? Was so like, weird. I was like, I guess we just put shelves there. Yeah, it, so it just, it's like. It was such an odd space, you know? But at least it, you did something with it. It's creative. Right, yeah. I mean, downstairs where we did the living room, it mm -hmm. was, they had the side fireplace and it was kind of like an uneven wall. So mm -hmm. we just kind of leveled it off and did like a floor to ceiling. Now, are, do you normally come in at budget as well? No. Our so, budget was actually like 110. We came like almost like 125. So. Does that normally happen? All the time. Okay. <laughs> it, ne it never goes at budget. So I always keep like a good pad on there because you never, you, there's always stuff that comes up too, you know, that you're not aware of, so. And uh, for a project like this, like how long does it take to? This one is actually fast. We bought it in May, two mm. months, put it on the market. In 14 days, we got an offer. So Ooh, this one was strong. good. I mean, it doesn't always happen like that, though. Oh, does it? Sometimes. I mean, you're making it sound like it's so easy. <laughs> no, it's not easy. And it's like <laughs> so enticing where yeah. I just want to roll the dice. But again, I just so conservative. Is, I don't have the balls. I to do, do get it. nervous, so it's it's risky. It's risky. But mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like any renovated property turnkey, you know, people yeah. want it. So as long as the price is right. You know so. what? She should actually write a book and create a course. <laughs> You know, you my husband that is so work. freaking strong, dude. A female that's doing I this. I see a lot of investors doing that now, like teaching and all that. Yeah. But we're so busy still with the Airbnbs and doing flips, so. Okay. And how many yeah. Airbnbs do you have again? We have eight. We sold two because, you know, it's it was super hard to get our license in Clark County, so we ended up selling them. So everything out here is sold? We have eight still. Eight still. We have two in Henderson. We have two in Clark County pending a license. And then the others are like corporate rentals. Yeah, I have a buddy of mine. Um, that's what he does is mm -hmm. Airbnb. And uh, it seems like he's constantly running into trouble. because It's guidelines really keep... stressful. I mean, the money's good. I mean, compared to just the actual yeah. lease, you're going to make like four to five times as much money. Okay. But you're going to deal with like parties, the, you know, code enforcement coming all the time, liens, like it's, it's but definitely But it's worth the money. Stressful. It's worth the money. I hired a property management. I could not handle it myself. I tried at first, but they're kind of handling it. They're really good. So I kind of just stay out of it at that point. But, All right, let's yeah. let's move along. So we have the closet here. Yeah, this big walk-in closet. Now I noticed this is just off stock and standard. Yeah, uh, we left the standard just, you know. Is this kind of normal on the flip where you don't really do the closet? 
It depends. I mean, it depends the price range, but I feel like under two million, we kind of just leave it standard. And so leave once it you up hit the two the million, buyers, then you'll do the upgrades. I would, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Do like custom cabinetry in here. Um, so, so out here we have three more bedrooms. Okay. And it all looks down to the family room. There's two bedrooms here. We have a Jack and Jill bathroom. So it's good for families with kids. They can share a bathroom here. They both have, well, this one has a walk-in closet. So we have three bedrooms up here, a loft. We do have an office downstairs. Well, also, four guys, bedrooms up here, oh, four including, including the master. Including the master. Yeah, okay, four bedrooms. Bedroom. Also, don't forget, guys, we actually have a casita outside too as yeah. well. So okay. that's the fifth bedroom. Okay, Yeah. nice. So the other bedroom is here by the loft. Were these the original doors? These are, yeah. Okay. We just painted them. This is the original um, the railing too, yeah. actually. So this is a loft. I feel like it's good for like a game room. This could be a guest room. It has its own bathroom. Now I noticed all the walls are painted white. Is this something normal that you do? I just kind of started that. I used to do, first I did the gray. Yeah. Then I kind of started to do like the top neutral color. But I feel like everyone likes a pure white clean look now. So I, I do too. Yeah. It, With a six, seven inch baseboard. It just yeah. livens everything mm -hmm. up. Not only that, if the next person that buys it, they can kind of like change the yeah, color. Yeah, they can make, change make it. Make yeah. it a lot easier for them. Yeah. So we usually do pure white walls and then wood floors with some accent, okay. accent walls. Yeah. Yep. All right. What else do we got? And I think that's about it up here. And then we just have the casita and the courtyard. Okay. Now, is there any like uh, tips or advice that you can give to somebody that's just getting started? Um, I would say definitely make sure you're buying your property at least 30% below the ARV, which is the after rehab value. Mm -hmm. And just make sure you got your renovation budget in place so that you're not going over. Definitely don't over rehab for sure. Okay. Because I've done that a couple times. Yeah. I wanted to do more, but I was like, you know what? We got to stick to our numbers. We yeah. don't want to take a risk too much. and. I would always have an exit strategy just in case you never know what's going to happen. So, so see what you could rent it for mm -hmm. if you had to keep it. So what would this exit strategy be if you couldn't sell this it? This one, I mean, I would honestly, because we're flippers, I would try to just break even if I couldn't sell it, take even a small loss and move on. But if I was going to take a big loss, I would hold on to it, rent it out until the market goes back. So up. if you were going to take a $100,000 loss, would you hold on to it in today's oh, yeah. market? If that much, I would definitely hold on until the market goes up. But 15 grand for you is... Mm, mm. I, would, I would take a small loss for sure, if I had to. But, okay. I mean, like I said, it doesn't happen often, but it, it, we took a loss before. So it seems like there's a lot of compensating factors that you look at when you flip a home. Oh, for sure, It's yeah. just not only, hey, I like the home, I think I can get a good discount. Yeah, you you got to see sure what's going on with the market. Good. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like you got to know what the trends is at that time, mm -hmm. cost of rehab. Yes. So there's just a lot. So during our due diligence, we always have the contractor come in, give us an invoice, do the numbers, closing costs, interest, um, commission to the buyer's agent, and just see where we're at. And we kind of always try to list it higher just so we can negotiate. So. so when the contractor comes in, does that also include the materials or just Every, the labor? Everything, yeah, material, labor, like everything to make this house ready for the market. Oh, so, staging is separate, but yeah. Okay, so how'd you end up coming over budget then if you always have a bid? Because like, honestly, we weren't even, we weren't gonna do the wood slats, we weren't even gonna do this fireplace, because there was nothing here, it was just a wall. Yeah. So that was added after, we weren't even gonna do this wine wall, but I was like, you know, we have to add some details and some accent walls to make it pop, so. Nice. And then we had a couple issues with the shower that we had, that we that came up, so mm -hmm. stuff like that. It just adds up, you know. Okay. Yeah. So this one was listed for how much? It was listed at a million, nine ninety nine. Okay. We close at eight eighty. Got it. So and you're selling this for how much? One three two five list price. Wow. Yeah. That's a hell of a profit. It's good, yeah. We're still waiting on the appraisal, but yeah. We're Got scheduled it. to close. All right, let's go finish up outside with the yeah. casita and we'll see what's going on. Okay, here is the casita and it has a courtyard here that separates the main house. This is fully renovated too. We have a full bedroom, two closets, and a bathroom. Here. Nice. And it has a slider that walks out to the courtyard. So it kind of has like a private feel from this way. So it looks like mom or dad could just park here yeah. on the side and just come through this way then. Yeah, you can have two entrances that way or from the main entrance. Nice. So it's definitely, it was either a one car garage or a casita. So I feel like casita is what more people want. So paint the picture originally. What did this actually look like? I think this one had like red or green carpet. 
it was just completely dated from like 2000. It was original from 2002. Okay. So we painted all the walls, baseboards, flooring. We actually painted that closet. It was that brass gold. Oh, so you, you know? just painted right over that? Yeah, because it was like gold, gold color, and nothing in here is really gold, so we just painted over that, yeah. So if you notice that there's little tips and tricks here as we go through the video, she's not replacing the thing, she's just painting over certain things. Because they don't things. even sell that size anymore, so it would have to be like a full custom job to do a new closet. So it wouldn't even be worth so it. Yeah, we just painted it. Okay. It's even the track you guys painted? Yeah, painted the track and everything inside, from the inside and out. So if somebody wants to follow you on social media, what's your social media? So you can reach me on Instagram at Wendy LV Real Estate. There you go. Yeah. Wendy, I just want to say thank you yeah. for allowing us the opportunity to come by to take a look at your gorgeous for home. Sure. Thanks for and coming. sharing the tips and tricks. Yeah. You're awesome.